Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you all about my favorite vocal effects that are built into the Behringer X32. Now, if you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident with your production gear, no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, on the Behringer X32, we have eight effects racks built into the console. So we have effects one through four, which is going to be a time-based effect. And then we have our effects racks five through eight, which are insert effects. Now, you can insert on effects one through four, but one through four have an effects return built in to our channels. So we have channels one through 16, 17 through 32, and then aux in and USB returns plus effects returns. Now, if you have a smaller version of the console, your effects returns is going to be on its own eight fader bank, uh, which is still on the left-hand side of the board. So you'll just go and select effects returns. Now, by default, our effects sends are on buses 13 through 16. So if you pull up bus nine through 16 on the right-hand side of the board, you will see that bus 13, 14, 15, and 16 is what goes to your effects one through four. Now, by default, effects one is set to bus 13, two is bus 14, three is bus 15, four is bus 16. Now, each of these effects racks have a stereo in. So you could choose to do a stereo effects send to these effects and then have your stereo return into your effects returns. But by default, we are saving the amount of buses available on the X32 for use with monitors or subgroups or different things like that. So that's why we have a mono send for 13 through 16 to our four effects racks. Now, with that being said, I typically set up my four effects buses in the same way. I have vocal reverb on my effects one. I have my vocal delay on effects two. I then have an instrument reverb on effects three and then my drum reverb on effects four. Now, this video is is all about vocal effects and what are my favorite ones that I use. So I wanna jump in and talk to you about how I set up my vocal effects sends and returns and which effects I actually use. Now, a couple things first is when we are sending our channels to our effects, we are sending these in a post fader send, which means that the mix that I have on my vocals, for instance, my vocal five is leading and then I have a mix between vocals one through four here, I send post fade at zero to my effects. And that way this sets up the mix that I have here and sends that same mix to my effects. So I can go and select my effects one, which is my vocal verb, hit sends on fader, and we can see that all five of my vocals are sitting at zero. Same thing with the delay. Now my next thing that I end up doing with my vocal sends for my vocal verb and my vocal delay is I do a little bit of EQ shaping on the effects send. So I have selected my Binks bus 13 and I'm gonna go select my EQ. And as we can see, I'm doing a little bit of tone shaping on this send before it even hits the effect. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a low cut, about 160. I'm doing a high cut at about 5.7K. And then I have a little bit of a mid-range duck. Now what this is doing is this is just shaping the vocals before it hits the effects. And then the effects will then go back into the effects return. And I'll, I'll bypass this later and let you hear the difference. Now on my vocal delay, I do pretty much the same thing and I need to adjust this a little bit. So here's my effects there. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more of a cut. And as we can see, I am cutting a little bit more of the high end to shape the tone of my delay. Now, a couple of reasons for this. Now with my verb, I don't wanna have too bright a verb. The typical places that I'm mixing in aren't super bright as far as reverb goes. And so when I'm mixing, I'm trying to replicate a natural sounding verb for the space. So if I am mixing in a bright sounding room and I do wanna add some reverb into that mix, then what I'll do is I'll make my reverb a little bit brighter. But in my case, with most of the places that I'm mixing, it's more of a dark sounding room. So I try to replicate the sound of verb to match that room. Same thing with my delay. 
But the delay, what that's going to do is I'm wanting to take off a little bit more to the high end to have this actually sit in my mix a little bit better. And I'll show that to you once we actually get going here. Now, in my effects, I have two effects here. I have my vintage room, as we can see, and I typically will leave my pre-delay at about 30 milliseconds. My decay, I will vary depending on the speed or tempo of the song. If it's a faster song, I'll probably set my decay a little bit faster, maybe about one and a half to two seconds. And if it's a slow song, then I'm gonna leave it in the 2.5, maybe 3.5 seconds for the decay. Now, freeze isn't really useful for me, uh, but what it does is it freezes the sound of the verb inside of this verb and just keeps echoing that over and over and over again. So not really useful for me. The size knob will vary the amount of room size for this verb. Our density is how dense we want to have that reverb. And then ER levels, um, that stands for early reflection levels. And so you can vary that depending on how you want that verb to sound. And then on our second layer down is we have a low multiply and a high multiply. Now the low and high multiply basically shapes the tone of the verb when it is repeating or verbing. And then we have a low cut and a high cut that is similar to what I'm doing on the mix bus. And then we have our ER left and our ER right. And that's early reflections on the left side and early reflections on the right side. And this is how late or delayed we want those early reflections to sound. Now an early reflection kind of is like a little bit of a slap back off of a wall inside a room. So when we hear a natural reverb, we're not only hearing the direct sound of the source, but we're hearing a bounce back off of a wall behind us or around us, and then we hear the bouncing around of that effect in that room or that natural verb in that room. So that's how I set up my vintage room. Now that we've talked about this for a little bit, let's actually go ahead and get this music into my mix here, and I will start out with no reverb at the beginning and go ahead and add it in here in a second. So. So here we can go ahead and add in the verb. Take it out. I'll go ahead and overemphasize this. Now, if I go into my send and I take out the EQ here, it's just a little busier. Here's out. Here's in. Now the next thing that I have is a vocal delay. Now, a vocal delay sounds like an echo. Echo, 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 echo. So you can define those echoes on a tap tempo. And so by default, the X32 has these assigned sections set as a tap tempo, and that's why it's always flashing. So if you're wondering why a button is flashing in your assign section, that is tied to a time-based effect on your X32. And so with my effects 2, I'm wanting to have this tap tempo here so that I can tap the tempo of the song so that my stereo delay is in time with that song. Because if my delay is set to an off tempo, then the repeats or the delay is not going to line up with the song and then it's going to sound pretty weird. And so if you don't currently have a tap tempo set in your user assign section, you can press view. And then we have our different sets that we have here. So we have three different sets on the full size. And so I'm gonna page select over to set A, and then I'm gonna go find the button that I wanna assign it to. So in this case, I want it to be my second knob here. So for my 
effect two. So this is going to be button six. And so I'll go scroll down to button six. We'll then go and select effect button. And then on effects two parameter, we can set that to time. And once you have that assigned, then we can actually change our time. Now the other thing that I have is my encoder 2. Um, I currently have that set to time, but we could assign our four knobs to maybe be volume if we wanted to. So to do that, we would go and find which knob it is, so knob 2. So I'm going to go to my encoder 2, and then I'm going to go to fader, and then we can go and find our effects return to left, and there we go. And so now at this point, I can control the volume of my verb simply from these knobs if we want to. And so to do that for the rest of them, I would go to go encoder 1, and I would go fader, and scroll all the way down until we get to effects 1 left. And because these are a stereo pair, I can affect both of them volume-wise with just turning this knob. So there we go. Now, with my effect delay, I think of this as a verb with a lot of slapback reflections. I don't think of this as a long throw delay where we are hearing the same word a couple seconds later. That you definitely can do with a stereo delay, but when I'm setting up a stereo delay, I'm thinking of adding thickness to the vocals. And by doing what I'm gonna show you, adds thickness to that vocal. So I think of my stereo delay as a verb, not a delay, even though it is a delay. But what I do is I set my repeats fast so that it's just doubling up the amount of sound from the vocals, which kind of help your vocals sit really nicely in your mix. Now, when I'm doing this, we have my mix. I always set that to 100%. Now, if you set this to zero, then you're going to get no affected signal. So you're gonna get the completely dry signal from your mix bus 14, in this case, directly to your main left right, which is silly. I don't wanna do that. I wanna have all of the effect on this fader for my stereo return on effects two. That way I can mix in the level of my delay into my mix. And so this is my adjustment for the volume of this delay. Time is going to be based on how fast you tap the tempo. And so we can see that I'm tapping uh, once every 482 milliseconds. Uh, mode is stereo. There's a couple different settings here. There's mono, there's cross, which crosses them, and then there is stereo. I typically always leave this on stereo. Now, factor left and factor right is how the delay is going to factor the repeats off of your time that you're tapping. I will typically tap a quarter note. And so when you're listening to the song and you feel that tempo, that's the tempo that you're wanting to hit on the button. And so the factor left and right is basically taking that tap tempo that I was tapping and then it divides it into the numbers that we have set here. So I am having the factor left repeat on three eighths and then on my factor right it is repeating on two thirds. And so by changing these you will change the sound of the delay or how many repeats happens on either side. Now I have these set on two different factors and that way I get a stereo feel to this delay. Now offset left right allows you to offset the left and the right signals by a little bit of time. So we can see that I'm offsetting it by 48 milliseconds. Now if we go down to layer two, we have some options here. Now we have low cut and then we have high cut. Now these two knobs are what's going into the delay or into the effect. And then we have feed low cut and feed high cut on these two knobs, so on knob three and knob six. These are the high cut and low cut for the echoes or the feedback that's happening. Now, the last thing that we have here is our feedback left and feedback right percentage. This is how many effects are going to actually repeat. So the higher number the percentage, the more effect is going to happen, the lower the percentage, the less effect is going to happen. I just tossed a lot of stuff to you. Uh, now remember, on my mix bus 14, which is feeding into my stereo delay, I am doing a little bit tone shaping. And then on the return, I'm also doing some tone shaping because I'm really not wanting to muddy up the low end and I'm not wanting to have too much high end. 
Now, the specific thing with the delay is I don't want to have a lot of high end because I don't want to make my mix sound confusing. And so with a delay, if you have too much high end in your delay, then it will compete with that lead vocalist. Now, what we can do is we can shape that down. And so if we go back and look at our effect here on my feedback high cut, I have this set at 2K8 or 2.8K. And so what it's doing is the repeats are more in the mid range, not the high range. And so by doing that, it's keeping the vocals that are singing and it's keeping that nice and clear in the mix, which is important to me. The very last thing that I end up doing is on my vocal delay return, I actually send that to my vocal verb. Now this is one of my favorite little tricks. So we can see that if I go and select my vocal verb, sense on fader, we can see that I am sending this at about negative five into my vocal verb. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and mute this send for now. And I will then go and unmute this here in a little bit. And we will hear that it just makes a little bit more complex sound to it. So I have this and let's go ahead and pull up my mix here and start going. So this is what the delay is actually doing. Sounds awful. But if we go here and go back to our feedback high cut, we can hear that that would compete with these vocals. So here, let's unsolo it. Okay, and I'm gonna adjust these down. Now, I typically don't leave it up that high, so I'm going to bring it down. Add in the verb. Here's without any effects. Here's with. So I'm going to go in and turn in this into the verb here. I'm going to overemphasize this. There's without that send of the verb. That's way too much vocal effects, so this is where I would normally be sitting it. So here's without. Here's with. Here's without the delay. Here's without the delay. Here's with. Now, again, if I go into my vocal delay and I adjust these high cuts up, it just competes with just competes with the vocal a little bit more than I want it to. And so that's why I'm always reaching down for the two, three K-ish range. And I'm adding in a little bit of low cut here on the return and the send as well, or return here and the send over here.
Now, if you are mixing in a very large space that has a lot of verb and a lot of delay, you probably don't need to add vocal verb or vocal delay, or especially at the level that I'm adding it here. If you want to, you can definitely slip it in just a little bit into that mix. Now, if you're mixing broadcast, there is a very big benefit of having this verb in it. And if I go and press play on this, and I have no verb, it, it feels a little bit just like too direct. It feels a little too unreal. And so if you do have some room mics, you can definitely add that in. But by adding in this verb, it just gives it a life and a sense that it's real. Now, by adding in too much verb and too much delay, you can definitely busy up your mix. And in some cases, that would be a bad idea. So make sure that you're adding this at a very low level to start out with and kind of feel where that needs to sit in your mix to make it sound nice and real. So again, on my vocal verb, I am typically grabbing my vintage room with a 30 on the delay. Decay is 2.6. Room size is 34. Density, 30. Uh, error level at 46%. My a level here is to set this at a lower level. So um, we can adjust this down to bring this fader up. So we can see that I'm sitting here on this at 3.7. So if I wanted to, what I could do is I could bring this up to zero and adjust this down another 3 dB. And then I can let my fader sit at zero here instead of slightly under. So you can do that with the level. On the second layer, we have our low multiply of 2, high multiply of 1.3, low cut at around 200, high cut about 6.6k, and then our error left and our error right at 48 milliseconds. And on my stereo delay, I have on my top, mix at 100 time, based on our click and metronome of that song. Mode is on stereo. Factor left is 3 over 8. Factor right is 2 over 3. Offset is 48 milliseconds. Go to my second layer. Low cut, 167. High cut, 3K. Low cut on the feedback is about 200. We have our feedback set at 42 and 44. And then our feedback high cut at 2.6K. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you today. If you do happen to have any questions or there's a video that you're hoping that I would make on the X32 or really any of the other production equipment that's out there, please post that comment in the comment section down below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are going to be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com where I do have some effects presets for sale for the X32 and M32. So go check that out if you want. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Perfect.